if you ever want to be a, a jerk to customers and someone says like what kind of cow is this uh it, it's the correct answer is beef because it's not a cow it's not a steer it's not a bull it's all beef most likely it's a steer um let's see i've got one this this one comes from uh my inspector that i may or may not currently work with um before he was an inspector he owned a custom exempt slaughterhouse with a retail exempt shop Mm -hmm. in the front um where they'd you know do box meat and they wouldn't actually be selling the things that they were killing um yeah, there's a couple of places around here that do that. I, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. It's kind of a cool idea. Um, so, uh, so they've got a big bull in the back in the slaughterhouse, and you know he's in the knockbox. They stun him. Did not check for signs of sensibility. Open the knockbox up, and it stands up and starts, you know. Moving around. It wasn't a good knock. It just kind of knocked him off for a second, but he came up mm-hmm. fully cognitive. Uh, the only thing that was separating the retail area from the, the slaughterhouse, the kill floor, was a door in a very small corridor. And then it <laughs> opened up to a double door in the retail area. And that bull walked right through that corridor and right out the, the swinging doors into the retail area. And people apparently just like dropped their meat and ran, you know, Butchers jumping over the counter to get out the front door. The bull ended up going through the front door onto the street and then bolted. Ended up about three miles away at a cemetery hmm. where it was stomping all over the place, knocking down gravestones, and they shot it right there. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, when I work in Vermont, <laughs> I've had uh, several animals. Uh, I don't want to say like break loose or anything but if we're able to get themselves out of where they were supposed to be um, oh, man. and find themselves i remember one time the usda came in and her name uh, i'm not gonna say her name but uh she was a southern woman and she'd be like travis there's a sheep in my office and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and <I> would, <laughs> you know i've had like, a hog jump out of the little a little enclosure when we were gonna stun it because it was so big and it just didn't want to be in there, so it just jumped right over the gate and then was loose on the kill floor. And that's the worst, you know? Yeah. Especially if you're on clean side and it wants to come over to where you're at. Yeah, when I was uh, in Vermont, uh, we had two sheep uh, escape. They didn't escape. They just, uh, as during the unloading process, there was just a gate uh, oh. not shut. So they just kind of just didn't go in there. Then we're like, when we tried to <laughs> corral them, they took off. We got a phone call from the local high school that there were in between really the, in between the medium of on like uh, the 91 go going north up to canada uh for anyone who's listening out in uh southern vermont uh and we had to go out there and take two long shots on the grassy part in between the two freeways north and southbound <laughs> really yeah <laughs> um i do not know that's probably very illegal. <laughs> yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering. <coughs> and they were uh, also uh, then processed. We brought them back to the plant. Wow. Yeah. That that really turned out the best possible way, I guess. Yeah. Well, how about those goats that escaped on that farm that you and I worked at? They were on, they were unloading. They escaped. They were never able to catch them. No. And um, then one got pregnant. Yeah, and then one got pregnant by the other one, and then there was more goats that could not be caught that were eating fantastic, uh, orga- you know, organically grown haylage all winter. Yeah, and then I remember uh, the farmhands spent uh, all day, and he he caught all the goats, and then the farm boss or like one of the owners, we had he had him in a pen, and he came up and he's like, "I don't want to feed these things." It's like just let them out. They they seem to just eat whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we ended up getting them one day. Yeah. The old timer, Doug. Hey, in regards to your customer podcast, I had a customer ask me to mince up half a beef tenderloin because she was wait. That's someone else because she was going to feed it to her cat. It seems to be a common theme. 
our next story, I was able to interview Zach, uh, who is a butcher up here in Washington. And I'm going to play the clip. All right. My retail horror story comes right on the week of Thanksgiving. It was my first time ever managing a, a butcher shop. Most of the time, my boss at the time had had handled most of the larger accounts, and I was there for the day-to-day business. But the Monday of the week leading up to Thanksgiving, I showed up with him already at work and letting me know that I had a walk-in full of turkeys, a desk full of order forms, and that he was taking a last-minute vacation to Germany and wouldn't be answering his phone or emails for the time being, and that I should be totally fine, everything's set up, and it should go on without a hitch. So that was already stressful to begin with. And once I started compiling the orders for the week to get all my turkeys lined up, because they were already boxed and all I had to do was simply put an order form to a turkey and give it to the customers, there was not enough turkeys. He was short by about five to ten turkeys. So not everyone had even paid for them, so I was just waiting to see if people would even show up to get them. Some did, some didn't, and had to go on to the other butcher shops in the neighborhood to simply see if I could buy turkeys from them to then resell. And that was all great until some of the larger birds he had bought noted everything is already boxed, so I just had to go grab the box when the customer showed up, and I was already plenty busy running the day-to-day because the shop was located in Pike Place Market. That the larger birds, because everything was to be a... Uh, free range, all natural turkey, but he was selling them at pound ranges up to 20 to 25 pound birds. So when the customers opened the package, it was nothing but butterball turkeys that he had bought for cents on the pound, but charged yet $95. So I had to have a barrage of emails and phone calls of people wanting money back, wanting to switch the bird out for a real one day, hours before, you know, we were closing. It was, a lovely experience at 21 years old to have to combat with. So people were paying about a hundred plus dollars for something that wasn't what, what they were led to believe. Correct. Correct. They were thinking they were getting a free range, all natural Turkey and priced accordingly, but they were getting feedlot butterball turkeys put it in clever packaging. Yeah, it was it was probably the final straw that ended me leaving the company at the time. The, you know, it was if he was willing to do it for just this, everything was really coming in that way, just undermined for the customer's sake to sell it. Very high prices, and he thought it was all okay because of location of the market. So, are you still working in retail? I am not. I, I moved to to wholesale USDA and custom. Still meat cutting though. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. Oh wow! I know that guy. He was he was notorious for putting grass fed, grass finished organic beef in the case and having it be something from you know stuff from cash and carry. Yeah, not Zach, the owner. Zach is yeah, just yeah. a pawn. All right, <laughs> um, man. I c- well, with the way labeling uh, restrictions are, that you know. Uh, no one regulates what the claim is next to the product as long as it doesn't say it on the product. Yeah, true. Which which is difficult. We run into some of that over here. I've got some far, some local farmers who are claiming to be selling grass fed, grass finished, organic beef at the farmers market where where my farm sells. Um, but it's all just the nastiest burned out milkers and hobbling. Cold. old cows from the stockyards, you know, and nobody, nobody can do anything about it. And they're just making money hand over fist. And it drives me nuts. You gotta be, have you seen uh, that episode of family guy where Peter's selling fish at the farmer's market? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then his competitor, um, puts out a sign saying, uh, I don't have sex with my fish. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> indicating yeah. that. So that's what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to keep that in mind. I can't believe that was our only holiday story. I mean, the holidays and the retail shops are the worst. They're super stressful and you get people being their absolute craziest. Yeah. Uh, well, 
when I was working retail, I was trained on how to use a POS during Thanksgiving, which was, I, <laughs> you know, a complete nightmare when you have that's awful uh, thirty people in the shop. Um, I'm dyslexic. Someone's reading numbers <laughs> to me that I'm supposed to be typing down, and I'm the best butcher there. And they, oh no, they thought this was the best for. But they thought this was the best thing I could be doing at that moment. Um, oh, I feel like man, it was that just, sounds like a plane crash. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, and then when uh, when Christmas rolled around that year, I luckily broke my finger. Um, <laughs> your, your your cash register finger. <laughs> yeah, and uh, because I was working you know, until two in the morning getting special orders ready. And then uh, somehow shut my finger in a walk-in door. Uh, Oh, no. And it it was, it was terrible. Um, People came in waiting hours to get stuff that should have been done. And I, well, I I felt pretty good (laughs) to not give a shit. Do you want? Do you do you want? So, you, are you ready to record it for real? What do you mean? You know, like for me to actually record it. Uh, you haven't been recording this whole time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh god. Oh, Damn. that was mean. That was terrible. Well, let's see. There's uh, <clears throat> this is this is one I. Let's see. Okay, here's the one. Uh, this one's from Hate Blindly. Love it. Okay, so she says this happened a few years ago at a grocery store that uh, she doesn't live far from in Greenville, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Apparently, a man went into the grocery store with a gun and ordered everyone to leave except his uh, his ex-girlfriend. She had gone to the police about him before. Um, apparently, he had been threatening her and been up to the store before. Uh, he forced everyone to leave the store. And the girl was kind of, you know, had become hysterical and was begging everyone not to leave her in there with him. Uh, But he had a gun and he told everyone to leave. And so they did. And before the police showed up, he shot and killed her. And then he killed himself right there in the middle of the meat department. True story, she says. It was really scary. Yeah, that, uh, that sounds dramatic. Certainly more. Yeah, wow. Uh, you know, people eating raw chicken. <laughs> that's an outlier. Yeah, that, that that's good. Those of you out there thinking about getting into retail, I think that that's a unique occurrence. I feel like that happened, uh, you know, at least once a month when I was working retail at my shop. <laughs> Abe mm-hmm. from Instagram, he says, uh, last October we had a shoplifter that would come in regularly. Um, but nobody could ever catch him because, you know, they were waiting on customers. You're not supposed to make a big deal, you know, whatever it may be. Um, one day he came in and before the dinner rush, uh, Abe confronted him. And apparently the guy became super aggressive. He had his bike with him and he was swinging it at Abe. And they got into a bit of a, a tussle. Mm-hmm. And um, Abe tried to, to hold him there until the cops showed up. You know, he was trying to kind of restrain him because the guy had been ripping him off again and again. And um, they ended up, you know, letting him go uh, because I don't think that you can legally restrain somebody like that. And it turns out, he says, that was their worst mistake because he left for a hunting trip that night. Mm -hmm. Um, As soon as he came back, they told him that the following day, the guy came back with a bucket of his own shit and piss and paint. And then he ended up throwing it onto the meat counter, onto the case in a room with thousands of dollars worth of meat. Well, uh, that ended in the county hazmat team showing up to their store. I mean, rightfully so. I think the best thing about that story is that Abe was out of town. Because I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I would, hate, I would hate to w- want to deal with that. Yeah. I would want nothing to do with that. Yeah. Nothing. Um, on my last day when I worked for a big retailer, uh, I accidentally, as I was cleaning out the the poultry case, which was, I don't know, probably probably a 24 to 30 foot case, mm-hmm. uh, I broke one of the coolant lines. Ugh. 
10 minutes before I was supposed to leave and just, you know, kind of, kind of left. You motherfucker. 